Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I uh, want to share with you a little message here on our Patreon channel I thought you might find uh, insightful. And, and I kind of got inspired from my wife the other night when she was, uh, woke up, I don't know, two or three o'clock in the morning. I forget exactly what she was speaking about, but she was speaking about something and it made me think of inheritance. Uh, and as that came up, I couldn't help but think about the fact that we inherit from our Lord Jesus Christ everything. And when, you're in, when you inherit everything, it's like, do we ever really think about just how vast, how powerful that is? In Revelation 21, for example, verse 6 and 7, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But that includes daughters as well, by the way. Uh, and I could prove that, but that's a totally different way to do that. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But don't worry, you're not left out, right? Also, in Matthew, for example, we have in verse 34, verse chapter 25, verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then we read in Lamentations. This one's interesting in itself. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Behold, and see our reproach. Our inheritance is turned unto strangers, our houses unto aliens. We are become orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunk our water for money, and our wood cometh to us for a price. You remember, you see, Jesus came to his own, his own received him not. But he promised to turn. He promised to turn to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles have inherited the very blessings of Jesus Christ that were meant for the Jewish people, but they returned, they turned it down. Now, any Jewish person could also believe even now and inherit everything that Jesus Christ is. And what I was thinking about when I got this revelation on this is that, you know, when you inherit, whether it be your father, your mother, whoever's estate you may inherit in life, you, you get everything. The good, the bad, everything comes with it. But in the case of Jesus Christ, and in a way, I guess you could say we inherit the good and the bad as well. Because Jesus said, if they persecuted me, the Son of God, how much more will they persecute you? So yeah, you inherit persecution for standing for the truth. But also we notice that he could lay hands on the sick and the sick recovered. You have inherited that gift. You have inherited the ability to walk on water, to heal the blinded eyes, to raise the dead, to feed the multitudes. All of this is part of your inheritance. You know, I remember years ago, a minister making the statement, when you inherit something, he said, what's interesting, he said, if, if, you, and, if you had uh, your, your, your parents, they left you this big, beautiful home or whatever, or maybe you didn't even know them, and you inherit this, this tremendous home, and he said, and you go to it, he said, you wouldn't leave anything unturned. You would look through everything, every cupboard, every cabinet, and everything. Why? Because you have inherited it. It is yours. The deed now belongs to you. And you look through everything. You look through the drawers, through the file cabinets, you know. The different rooms to see what's in this home that you've inherited. Because why? It's yours. And I think what happens is we don't realize that we have not only inherited eternal life, but everything that Jesus Christ stood for, we haven't inherited. Jesus said that the works that I do, you will do also greater than this because I go into the Father. Wow, 
Think about, I go into the Father. How did he get there? By death. What happens when a person dies? That's when the inheritance is passed down. The difference is, though, we inherit life with him because he was able to raise from the dead. So you don't only inherit everything that he did while he was on the earth, but greater than this. Why? Because he goes into the Father. So even those things that he could do in that dimension where the Father is, you have inherited that life as well. No wonder why there's a greater, right? Let's see what else I have. I don't even know what I have on here, all right? You know, and this here is just where God, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, taking it from the Jewish people and giving it over to the Gentiles, right? They say unto him, let's back it up just a little bit, Matthew 21. And this was to deal with inheritance as well. Here, another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about, digged a wine press in it, built a tower, let it out to a husbandman, and went on a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandman that they might receive fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. They killed him. When the Lord therefore the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto an, to an other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their season. Season, excuse me. So Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but whomsoever it shall fall will be ground to powder. Again, that inheritance. Christ was that son, but we are that children. And we are the kingdom that would be taken from them was given to that nation, us as the children, that we are those that inherit those incredible gifts that Jesus Christ has given unto us. We read here in Acts chapter 26, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to to make you a minister and a witness both of these things which you have seen and those things in the which I will appear unto you, delivering you from people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I will send you, to open their eyes, to open and turn to them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And there Paul speaks of the inheritance that is passed down to you. You know, what gets me, though, is just how that we have inherited so much and we don't even realize what all God has given us. Let not your heart be troubled, John 14 says. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether you goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him you know what's interesting though is jesus talks about going to prepare a place for you and he says if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there you may be also 
I wonder why the scripture says we are in heavenly places. Jesus said, in that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. You know, a lot of times I think we put that scripture way off into a future place, not knowing he already prepared that place. Because if he said that in that day you will know, what day was that? The day of Pentecost. I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. He must have already prepared that place. And that where I am, there you may be also. So if we are truly in Christ the way we should be, and we have inherited all things, everything that he was and is, we are and we have. All we have to do is lay claim to our inheritance. And, and I know from my own experience in the natural realm, when it comes to my own father, it was a battle. There was a fight that had to be waged. But still, it lay there because it belonged to me. It belonged to my sister. And of course, my sister passed away and then her children took place in her steed as well. And just from that natural law and the way things work there, I began to realize even more so with Jesus Christ, we have inherited not just eternal life, but everything he is. Everything that he stands for. The good and the bad comes with it. When I say the bad, that's the persecution. That's those that will make fun of you for what you believe in. Those that will mock you. Those that will spit on you. Because he said he was the master of the house and they did this to him. How much more they'll do it unto you. And even with my own father of this earth, those that did not like him, those that had issues with him, I inherited that as well. But there's a good side. And in the case with Christ, there is an amazing side. As we often have heard the statement made, we live, I think it was David Duplessis that used to say, we live far below our privilege. And I should make that plural, privileges. Because every time you look at Jesus, when he multiplied the fish, when he multiplied the bread, when he walked upon the water, when he said, peace be still, and the winds and the waves obeyed him, you are an inheritor of everything that he is, everything that he was, and everything that he will be. Ask what you will, he said, and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. And he tells us this. And yet we let it walk right past us as if we don't even realize it. Don't know why I have this one marked, but we'll look at it as well. In the book of Luke chapter 21, Jesus says in verse 10, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes. Oh, this one here, I brought this one out because of the um, uh, well, you could even take this as part of your inheritance. Do not meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. But he did say, you'll be betrayed by both parents and brethren, kinsfolks and friends. Some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. 
but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess you your souls, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart, depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these are, be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. We'll just kind of close with that there. I, I didn't, this is actually part of a different message that I was looking at. But just know everything that Christ is, was, and shall be, you have inherited. Don't be afraid to believe, for all things are possible to them that believe. And as Jesus all said, also said, when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall have what you asked for. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. I apologize. I did not go deeper on this sign of Jonah, this eclipse that is coming up. The reason being is there is a very important passage in an ancient document that I was trying to find. I was unable to find that document, and uh, it does exist, and I can't wait to find it, because keep in mind, even though this eclipse comes and goes, I don't think that you know it will really matter anything that would were to happen during that time, no doubt, if it's an evil event, will be orchestrated by the elite that is out there in the first place. I've heard some say that we'll have 10 days of darkness, that there'll be no electricity during this time. Again, that's not going to be because of an eclipse. But certainly, there could be some evils that happen, much like other evils that have happened in these different uh, scenarios that have happened going all the way back to the year of 2011. But don't forget those that are behind such evils. But remember, still yet, greater is he that, in, that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live on Patreon.